Welcome back, everyone. It's the Bourbon Judge. We are back at it, ready to have some fun. So the court is in session. Three bottles, three judgments. So um, before we kick it off real quick, I want to give a huge shout out to my newest patron, my good friend, Michael King. So Michael, thanks for supporting the Bourbon Judge. I appreciate you uh, becoming a patron as well as thank you for all my other patrons as well. All the men, all the ladies that are out there. We always have a blast. So Michael, welcome to the Judge family, as we say. All right, cool. Um, so we're going to go through these three different bottles. Um, some of these I just got recently. The other ones, uh, I had it for a while. Just never had a chance to actually to open them. So we're going to go ahead and dive into them. Cool? All right. We're going to go in order of proof as well. So the first one here we have, this is Chattanooga Whiskey, the Founders uh, 11th Anniversary Blend. Woo! Founders 11th Anniversary Blend. All right. So let me go ahead and pop this. So when you think about Chattanooga Whiskey, obviously they're based down in Chattanooga, Tennessee. Um, they make a lot of different products. I mean, they have the, which one of my favorites, the, the port that they make, the port finish is phenomenal. They have the bottled bond, high malt, and a whole bunch of like other varieties. But this Founders Edition, this is paying tribute. I can't even get this thing off. <laughs> They're paying tribute to like when they open. So they've now been open 11 years. So this is actually the, yep, this is the 11th uh, anniversary um, of them opening. So what they're essentially doing, they're taking a blend of their own whiskey um, from when they started, plus a little bit of uh, their original partners who they work with uh, when they first started out, as many companies do. They started out working with MGP. So it's truly a combination of three different whiskeys where they're you know blending it all together. Um, some of their whiskey, some from MGP, um, and then they're bringing it down to exactly 100 proof from an MSRP standpoint. So this bad boy goes for, I think it's about $75-ish, kind of depending on obviously where you get it from. I had a hard time finding this bottle. So one of my buddies a while ago, he actually you know, went out, did some hunting for me. One of my good friends down in Tennessee, uh, he went out, went hunting for me and grabbed this bottle for me and, and shipped it up to me, which is cool. So I appreciate you, by, by the way, my buddy, Greg. Thanks, Greg. All right, so we got a $75 bottle. This is their 11th anniversary. So obviously they started 11 years ago. And again, this is a blend of several different whiskeys, some coming from Chattanooga whiskey and some also coming from uh, MGP, but they blended it together to make a very unique experience. And then also to kind of to celebrate, as it says here on the side of the bottle, the past, the present and the future. I like that Chattanooga whiskey. All right, here we go. Let's see what we got here, $75. This is like kind of like one of their top of the line, if you will, because this is truly like their anniversary edition, if you will. Again, they also had, so this is the 11th anniversary. They also had the 10th anniversary as well. All right, let's see what we got. Mm, the nose is nice and crisp. Mm, you get a good blend of, um, the first note that kind of gets me from the nose standpoint is almost like a, um, well, ton of like baking spices meat almost like a very subtle kind of a note of caramel vanilla and almost like a root beer kind of a note together so it's like a root beer meets like a caramel vanilla but mixing with some some baking spices as well all right chattanooga whiskey i'm a huge fan of the port their port finish oh my gosh that 95 proofer amazing but this one right at 100 proof the nose is nice all right folks let's see what we got here Cheers. Ooh. Mmm. Wow. What is this? Wow, 100 proof. Damn. So, what's interesting about that is that it's 100 proof, but it almost sips closer to like 105, maybe even 110. Very interesting. Wow. Mm. That has a very bold, vibrant, and actually a long finish for a 100 proofer. I like this because it kind of snuck up on me. When you think 100 proof, a lot of times you might think, oh, it's such a lower proof point. It might not be as bold, as vibrant, or as robust as we all might like it to be. But I will tell you, for a 100 proof whiskey, coming from Chattanooga Whiskey. Again, they're blending and sourcing their own distillate with some um, 
some MGP distillate as well, but they, they crafted a very unique experience. So you might ask, Judge, is this a buy, a do not buy, or leave it on the shelf? What am I doing? That, my friends, is a buy. In fact, let me get a little bit more. <laughs> mm. I will say, what I loved about the palette, though, is that all those notes, like those baking spices, um, as well as like the caramel, and just a little bit, I mean, a smidge of like root beer kind of came through in the finish as well. That is a very bold, crisp, sweet, but a vibrant whiskey. That is actually amazing. I am quite impressed. Quite impressed. I can't say it. Woo! Can't say it enough, I should say. Quite impressed with that. Absolutely fantastic. All right. Now let's go ahead and move over to uh, this bad boy here. So this is ASW out of Georgia. So we think of ASW. You think of George and McGorry pour this bad boy. A um, lot of us love, obviously, if ASW. I did a barrel pick ASW the Fiddler. Um, that should be coming. I think that's available in the next couple weeks, actually, for my patrons. So that's gonna be a blast. That bottle was just flat out ridiculous. Um, but this ASW as a whole, when you think of just ASW, you think of Georgia whiskey. You think of uh, ASW. You think of Thirteenth Colony. And what we all love about ASW and just Georgia whiskey in general is that it gets like that unique and extreme heat. Not as bad as like Texas whiskey heat, but um, definitely the just the heat obviously down in Georgia creates such unique flavors in their whiskey um, as a whole. And what I love about it, it makes it a little bit hotter, a little bit sweeter as a whole. And I'm a big fan of that. But this bad boy here, so what do we have? So this is from ASW. This is not the Fiddler, I should say. This is called the Resurgence. So this is double copper pot distilled, and it says it on the side here. So this is 100% malted rye whiskey, then finished in port cast. Again, I saw this uh, came out, and again, Mrs. Judge got this for me as a birthday present, uh, but I did see the email that came out from Share Pour. So this is like a $100 bottle. Um, this one's coming in at 114 Point six proof so 114.6 proof so this should be very interesting because you have that malted rye whiskey which typically if it was malted rye whiskey i actually love but it's going to be very interesting the fact that it's finished in uh port cast uh export cast um, barrels let's get to the nose so this is almost like goodness gracious you get some cherry notes almost like dried uh cherries if you will some chocolate covered raisins, some coffee. Wow, this is a unique, and I mean unique nose. Definitely like chocolate covered raisins, some dried cherries, a um, bit of like grape in the background. What else is in there? There's something else in the far back. What is that? It's almost like a like a, a blackberry kind of a note. Like a, yeah, like a blackberry, like a toasted almost. Like a blackberry meets like a toasted caramel kind of a note. Very unique news. All right, friends. Hey, real quick. I need three quick, easy favors. Number one, hit the like button. Number two, drop me a comment. Let me know what are your thoughts. Have you had any of these? And if so, what are your thoughts on any of these different bottles? And last but not least, please make sure you also subscribe to the channel and also hit the bell so you get a notification each and every time I release new content. Cool? All right. Cheers. Woo! Oh man. Oh yeah. <laughs> the first thing in the palette that hit my palate all the way through to the finish was like that coffee note. You do get the cherries as well, like the dried cherry note as well, but the coffee note is definitely in there. And like the chocolate covered raisins, that is also in the palette. Let me get a little bit more. Wow. That is completely different than most bottles in the market. Very interesting. So, you might be asking, <laughs> Judge, should I go on share port and grab this, or should I leave it and not grab it? The verdict, my friends, is in. This is a split decision. Let me explain the reason why. So I actually did a uh, preview uh, to my patrons. I gave them the heads up on this bottle. So honestly, I had this neat as I just did now and even before as well, because obviously I've had a good bit of the bottle and I've had it with a cigar. 
here's my thoughts. Neat. Just drinking it neat. Neat, rather. This is probably, I would give it like a 5 out of a 10. It's very unique, but the coffee notes, the dry cherry notes, um, the chocolate notes, it's almost too bold by itself to sip it straight neat. Now, if you are a cigar uh, lover and you smoke cigars and you pair it with great whiskey, this with a cigar is a 10 out of a 10. I've had it two or three, two or three occasions with a cigar. And folks, I'm telling you flat out with a cigar, it might be one of the best whiskey experiences I've had pairing bourbon, or in this case, a, uh, a whiskey rather, I should say, uh, with a cigar, flat out amazing. So if you're a cigar smoker, grab this bottle. If you're not a cigar smoker, you may want to hold off. That's my uh, that's my thoughts. All right. Last but not least, we're moving over to Fourgate Kelvin collaboration number five. Woo! So, as most people know, with Fourgate, they have obviously have like numerous different releases. And when you think of Fourgate, they are sourcing their whiskey. They're taking older age whiskey that they source, age it for longer, and then they always do some type of a finishing. And that's the reason why the price is a little bit more because they're taking older age whiskey, uh, finishing it and aging it for longer periods of time and so forth. So that's the reason why the price is always a little bit higher. In this case, close to about, about 200 bucks. Um, this is Kelvin collaboration number five coming in at 117 proof. And as it says on the front, on the bottle, uh, it says here, Kentucky straight bourbon whiskey finished in Australian uh, Mariposa Sherry and Anejo dark rum cast. So this is their top of the line product from Kelvin uh, collaboration from Fourgate. Um, I've had Fourgate batch three as well as batch four and Kelvin collab three and four were flat out just ridiculous. So I also got this bottle. This one actually came from my mother-in-law. So I have to give my mother-in-law credit. So we shall see about number five. All right, so what's the finishing again? We have Mariposa Sherry and rum. All right, Kelvin collab number five. We shall see. Let's get into the nose. Oh, man. <laughs> Damn, that is nice. Oh, my gosh. The berry notes from, like, the sherry. Oh, my goodness. And the sweetness, like, from the rum, like the sugar kind of notes. It's almost like a, um, almost like, a, I almost get, like, a salted caramel kind of a note. Like a salted caramel, it's, it's sweet, but it's salty at the same time. Oh my goodness, this is nice. Wow, very sweet. Tons of like brown sugar, almost like a crystallized, like kind of like a brown sugar kind of a note, if you will. Oh man. But with the uh, the sherry, you definitely get a lot of the, um, the berry notes in there, like the blackberries. Wow. Maybe even like some strawberry notes as well. Some caramel, a little bit of leather. Mm, a little bit of pepper. The nose is very enticing. What's the proof on this one? 117 proof, 117. All right, as you say, only one way to find out if it's good. Cheers. Oh, wow. Oh man, that is interesting. That is very interesting. Let me get a little bit more. Oh man, that is extremely bold, extremely vibrant. It's a great mix of the sherry. There's a ton of like berry notes that I had in the nose that came through with like that dark like brown sugar slash caramel slash like a salted caramel kind of a note that all came through in the palette and it is long it's bold and it is extremely vibrant so you might be asking judge is it really worth 200 dollars? is it that damn good the fact that i'm pouring a second pour of it might give it away <laughs> Folks, if I'm giving you a judgment, you guys know me, I'm always gonna keep it real. That is flat out amazing, and that is definitely a buy all day, every day. Woo! Hey, 
as you say in this courtroom, peace, cheers, and most important, salute. Cheers, everyone.